Hello class 11 students. The other day we had started the poem composed upon Westminster Bridge um, September 3rd, 1802. Now uh, we, are, we know that it is a sonnet written by William Wordsworth and uh, we have done the octave part of it where we see that um, the poet while passing through the Westminster Bridge he sees um, the London city and he was passing at the very early hours in the morning and he is so very uh, mesmerized by the beauty of it that he goes on to say that earth has not um, anything to show more fair that is he concludes the fact that it is the most beautiful sight he has ever seen and he also says that if a person um, just walks by um, this bridge without even you know pausing for a moment or two to appreciate the beauty uh, of this um, you know city uh, with the sunlight the first rays of the sun uh, falling on it then that person uh, must surely uh, lack a sense of beauty okay um, he does not possess that aesthetic sense uh, that is needed to um, appreciate this kind of a scene that he sees before him and after that he goes on to say that uh, it appears to him that as though um, the you know London city has uh, worn the beauty of the morning like a dress okay and the next thing that he says uh, the city now doth like a garment wear the beauty of the morning he first says that it appears to him that uh, the beauty of the morning has been worn by the city like a garment and then the next line he says silent wear silent is it is very early in the morning and bare bare means without anything okay so once he is saying that you know you are wearing a um, the city is wearing a garment and the next time he is saying bare actually what he is trying to say is that this garment that he the means which I, which appears to me as a, a, a garment that is worn by the city the beauty of the morning this will change as soon as you know um, the day begins that is with the you know people beginning now people are all asleep so with the uh, beginning of the activities the scene will change completely and London this um, appearance of London won't be there it will be a totally different side but what he sees before him is something that he likes very much that's something which he enjoys seeing it and he says that I can see everything now you, uh, you must remember that uh, it is uh, he's talking of London in 1802 okay 1802 uh, that is at that time, um, London was, you know, still a, a city full of activities. But when he mentions open unto the fields, so uh, there must be fields surrounding the, you know, cities. I mean, just outside the cities. So means the poet is able to see till the horizon. Means uh, till the horizon. So. Uh, and he's also saying he's also mentioning all the man-made structures that is the ships the towers the domes the theaters that he's uh, seeing before him all lie okay uh, open unto the fields that is almost you know they are you can see the whole stretch together all bright and glittering that is it's very early in the morning and glittering can it's uh, it's quite, uh, you know, um, 
uh, means 1802 is not uh, we cannot think of uh, it as present London so maybe glittering could also mean uh, not only the rays of the sun falling on it um, still the people are asleep and the candles are burning um, inside the houses so that's why uh, you know he uses the word glittering in smokeless air yes since the activities have not begun since there are everything is quiet and still so the air is also clean and unpolluted smokeless is unpolluted air and even the word bear here also means that uh, one is uh, you know this is uh, like this garment which has been worn by the city would be taken off and another thing also is there it is very clean okay untouched unpolluted in that okay so we had already done till this it was just a recap of what we had done so far now the next uh, six lines of the sonnet never did the sun more beautifully steep in his first splendor valley rock or hill so he is so much touched by the beauty that he feels that never did the sun steep okay steep means you know never did the sun rise okay more um, in its first splendor that is the rising sun did not fall on any of the not natural objects you know he mentions the valley rock or the, of any of the, any natural things more beautifully than it is right now doing on these you know um, man-made structures so in a word he is um, he uh, thinks that this site is uncomparable or uh, you can say surpasses all kinds of beauty okay so that's why he says never did the sun more beautifully steep that is the rising sun has never fallen more beautifully on any other um, you know uh, things of nature that is on a valley rock or hill as beautifully as it is falling on this city never saw i never felt a calm so deep so you know a sense of peace okay um, pervades the whole atmosphere that is the atmosphere is very calm and it is also very peaceful and it uh, you know it uh, makes the uh, poet's heart also you know be at peace so he says never saw i never felt a calm so deep so you know this the um the uh, you know the peace that i felt by seeing this particular sight is uh, something which i will carry with me throughout my life in that way he's saying never saw i never felt a calm so deep the river glided which river uh, it is uh, the thames uh, thames river okay and uh, because the westminster bridge is upon the river thames so he's saying that uh, never saw i never felt a calm so deep um, the river glided so he is talking of the river thames okay it is it is glided now duck glided these are all old usage okay uh, duck means does glided means glide that is the flowing of the river the uh, river glided at its own sweet will that is as though you know the river is flowing um, at its own pace okay um, whichever way it likes however it likes it's flowing at its own sweet will now the river glided at his own sweet will his why because thames is known as the as you know referred to as old father thames so that's why the his uh, pronoun has been 
used uh, to describe this uh, river. Dear God, the very houses seem asleep. Dear God, so you know, he is uh, means that this uh, serenity, the tranquility of this, uh, the calm. Um, ness of this whole atmosphere, the um, you know the cleanliness um, is has uh, you know it, it it has such an impact on uh, the poet's heart that he invokes God that he says, oh God, I'm so happy that you know I have been able to see this London, okay, London in this way, because. You know, what we can gather from this poem is that uh, the poet is really enjoying the sight of this new London, okay, which he has not seen before. Because always he has seen London very busy, you know, people always uh, um, moving around, full crowded. Then everybody is busy trying to, you know, um, with their own businesses, uh, trying to make money, and even the uh, see, he talks of the river glided at its own sweet will. Why? Because it's very early in the morning, so the activities have not yet started. So what he means, uh, glided at its own sweet will. That is, the river is flowing at its own sweet will. It is not obstructed. Okay, it's um, by the um, you know. Uh, by the passage of ships and other small vessels in that way. So that is what exactly he means, the river glided as dear God. So he is thanking God. So that he has, means God has given him the opportunity to see such a beautiful sight. Dear God, the very house is seen asleep. It's very early in the morning. People have not risen yet. So he says, the very houses seem asleep. So this is like he's personifying the houses. What he means is actually the people in the houses are uh, asleep. And all that mighty heart. So whose heart is he talking about? What he is actually here referring to the city of London. The mighty heart uh, is lying still mighty heart that is the throbbing of the heart that is the um, very busy dynamic uh, London that he is very accustomed to so he's talking of that heart is lying still it's it's uh, uh, very heart is lying still is it is like when does when do we lie still when a person is dead so it appears to the poet as though you know london is dead in that way but what he means to say is that you know it is and another meaning of lying could be that not telling the truth so what he means to say exactly is that the picture of um, London that I am seeing right now is not what London is actually but whatever it is you know, I am really blessed to be able to uh, you know view this site and it has you know touched me to such a great extent that I feel that this is the most beautiful site I have ever seen and I feel that even the rising sun has not steeped more beautifully on any valley rock or hill. So that was for the explanation of the poem. Okay, we'll do the question answers in the next class. Thank you.